humans, I'm Dr. Stephanie Rose and I'm an audiologist for the Clinic to Clinic program at Hearing Life. First of all, congratulations on your new hearing aids. I want to go ahead and teach you today how to take care of them and how to properly put them in your ears. At nighttime is when we're going to remove our hearing aid and clean it so that it stays clean in the charger. Most of you are going home with rechargeable, receiver in canal, or receiver in the ear hearing aid. Okay, let's learn how to take out a hearing aid the right way. First, you never want to pull it from the behind the ear part. That is a sensitive little piece and it will cause the wire to deform over time. So you really want to pull it from right here. Also, if you yank it from the behind the ear piece, the dome, which is the squishy tip on the end of the hearing aid, could fall off in your ear and we certainly don't want that. So get right down to the base, clench the wire that's here right by your ear canal, open your jaw, pull back up and over. So here we go. Ah, and there it is. So that's how you properly take off a behind the ear hearing aid. Uh, and next I'm gonna go over what to do at night. One more thing. If it's too hard for you to find that elbow of the wire right here next to your ear, you can also fish out the retention line that lives back here and pull out up and over from that portion as well. Next, I'm going to go over what to do at nighttime. So at nighttime, the first thing we want to do is clean our hearing aid. Every night, you want to take a plain dry tissue. You want to take some of your hearing aid spray or ear mold cleaner. You're going to spray the tissue, not the hearing aid. And just a couple spritzes will be just fine, okay? And we're going to wipe the part that goes in our ear. That's this little squishy tip right here called the dome. We're going to wipe. I kind of will push and kind of twist on that dome to make sure it comes out nice and clean. You can even wipe down the tail piece and along the wire. This part here, we don't want to get wet because that's where the microphones live. Uh, and we will go over what to do with those in just a moment. Once you're done wiping your hearing aid, you're gonna go ahead and place it in the charger. You're probably wondering, is there a left and right hearing aid? And yes, there is. Each ear is individually tuned for your given ear's hearing loss. So it's important we don't get them mixed up. And it's kind of hard to make a mistake because if you put the right ear hearing aid in the left ear, it sort of points at a weird angle and it won't go in your ear very easily. So on the back of your hearing aid, you will find a red marker. You will also note that the, uh, the end of the speaker is also red versus blue for the left. Uh, and you can remember that like R and R, red is right. Okay, so here is the new Oticon Intent charger. It says Oticon, it has two slots, red is right, blue is left, and then on the back it just has a USB-C uh, uh, port to go ahead and plug in a USB-C wire. So once you're done spraying down uh, the tissue and wiping the end piece of the hearing aid, you're going to place it in its respective colored slot. And you wanna make sure that that wire is facing the back of the unit. So look at the word Oticon, put the button towards you and the wire away from you, and you're gonna go ahead and click it down in that slot. And you're gonna make sure you see a little light happening on here once it's plugged in. Uh, and you'll wanna have it plugged in already when you go to put this on the charger. You never want to unplug or plug in your charger while your hearing aids are in the base because that's not good electrical uh, practices, okay? Uh, so yeah, so you're going to leave them in there. They're going to charge overnight. It only takes a few hours to go from zero to 100%, and that's what they look like when they're in there. I have one with a tail, one without a tail. And then uh, about once a week, we're going to brush over those microphones and the button. The microphones are the little holes that are on the neck of the hearing aid and the back of the hearing aid. So you just give it a nice little brush there. So about once a week is good. If your hearing aid is not rechargeable, you just wanna make sure you're opening the battery door all the way at nighttime and placing it in a drying jar. That way the warm moist body heat from you doesn't build up inside that battery chamber overnight and you can also save your battery for the next day. Uh, when it is, again, the reason why we clean the hearing aid at nighttime is so that we're not pressed for time in the morning, but most of all, we don't want to get debris inside the charger that could come off from the hearing aid uh, because your ear is, you know, a warm, moist place. It has sticky wax and dry skin that comes out on the hearing aid. So we want to make sure to clear that off so that you're hearing your best and you're charging up properly. In the morning time, we're going to go ahead and put the hearing aid in our ear. 
I'm going to start with my right side. For this kind of hearing aid, you're gonna start by placing that behind the earpiece just right on top of your ear. If you go back too far, then this is not gonna be in the right spot when you go to put in the dome. And again, we have the dome, the retention line, we have the electronic speaker wire or the receiver wire, and then we have the behind the earpiece of the hearing aid with the microphones, the battery, the computer, all that good stuff in there, and the user button, which your audiologist or hearing instrument specialist, uh, a hearing care provider will set up for you so that it has either volume control or a program change. Uh, so just refer to your packet for what you have. Now, to put this on, let's start with that behind the ear piece again. Sorry, I got on a tangent. <laughs> We're gonna pinch this little elbow right here, get as close down to this junction where the tail meets the wire. And you're just gonna go directly behind this little flap of skin and you're gonna kind of pinch and push at the same time until you can't push anymore. Then you're gonna rotate your hand so it looks like this and you're gonna push on that junction where the wire meets the speaker and push a little more. You wanna make sure that this wire is completely flush with your ear. You don't want to have it sticking out all far over here. You want it as close to your head as you can. And notice I still have a little antenna sticking out here. That's my retention line. So you want to lift that up and place it in the outer curl of your ear right here. Not my hair. Don't look at my hair. <laughs> You're going to place it right there so that it catches if it falls. Look, watch what happens. See that? It didn't come out of my ear because it's catching on that, on that retention line. So everything in here pretty much stays in. So that'll give you a chance in case it gets knocked off accidentally. Okay, the first part of your new hearing aid orientation is done. I'm just now going to go over a few of the best practices for longer term maintenance. The first thing we want to talk about is replacing the domes and filters. When do we do this? Well, it's going to be every one to three months, depending on the human, how much wax you make, what your pH is like, and what it's doing to that silicone. Is it keeping it grippy? Is it losing, is it losing its grip and becoming slippery? Uh, so a lot of this is depending on the sound. So I would say best practice, just change it once a month both of them, the domes and the filters. And if you start losing sound sooner than that, it could be a little bit of wax totally plugged the speaker and you've lost all sound. So make sure that you're doing that as the first line of defense against a hearing aid that sounds dead. Just go ahead and change the dome and filter. When do I wear it? Well, you wanna wear the hearing aid for all waking hours. Even if no one is home to talk to, our quiet environment makes actually 2,000 sounds on average per day, and all of that stimulates your brain. So wear it from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, day after day after day, to help keep your brain stimulated with sound. Uh, you do wanna take it off to shower, use the pool, ocean, any kind of water activities. They can take a light rain, but don't shower with them. Another hearing aid tip is to make sure that if you are around loud sound, you want to go ahead and take off your hearing aids and put in ear protection. Just muting your hearing aids does not prevent a loud sound from getting in your ear the normal way and hurting your hearing. And even though you have hearing loss, you still have hearing that you could lose from loud sound exposure. If you happen to have a drying system that has moisture pellets, make sure you're checking those moisture pellets for color change at least once a month. Most of the rechargeable options won't need a drying kit, but just in case you happen to have a charger that has a lid and you're doing desiccants, make sure you're putting yourself on a schedule for those. Well, how often should I be coming back? Best practice would be to report to the center every three months so that we can do a thorough clean and check. Well, what can you do there that I can't do at home? We have needle suctioners and vacuum chambers that we can put the hearing aids in. We also know how to detach the wire safely and check your battery chambers if you have a, a, an openable battery door to see if there's any moisture getting in or if there's corrosion starting. And we can definitely help to maintain them a bit more thoroughly than you can at home just replacing domes. And You're also gonna report back to the center at least once a year for your annual test and fine tuning. So as our hearing changes gradually over time, the hearing aids also need to change their prescription over time so that they can accommodate your brain and keep it stimulated. Next, I'm gonna show you how to take off the dome and replace the filter. Make sure that you're not changing your domes around to different domes that were not given to you by your hearing care professional because they are based on prescription 
And actually, there is a science to what domes are in your ear. So if you have a problem with one, just call your hearing care professional, have that conversation, and then you may need some fine tuning if you change. Okay, so the, the best way to get this off of the best way to get this dome off of here is to start on one end and totally peel it over itself. You gotta really hold it. I, I'm making it look easy, but it's actually a very tough tug to get that dome off the speaker, okay? The next part I'm gonna talk about is the little white filter. This is called a mini fit filter from Oticon and their uh, label for them is Pro Wax. So this is a Pro Wax mini fit, mini fit filter. Inside here, there's a nice cartoon to show you what I'm about to do. And they usually will come on this little wheel with six of them. And we're gonna pull out a new filter. On one end, there is a new filter. And then on the other end right here, there is a removal tool. So we're going to take that black end first and push it into the center of this white filter. So I'm going to do that now pushing it in like that. And then I'm gonna pull out the old one like this. Oh, there it is, it just came out on that tool. And now I'm going to line up the new one, which is on the longer end of the filter. And I'm going to push, push it right into the center of that little nozzle of the speaker. So that's what it looks like now. Congratulations, you've just changed a filter. This is now uh, trash, you can go ahead and toss that and then put these away for later. Then you're going to get a new dome out of its little blister pack or however you are storing them. So you're just gonna peel off the back, get a new dome out, take the other one and throw it in the trash. The dome has a center coupler, a little center circle on the inside of it that is going to be catching that nozzle. So when you go to put this in, you do want to start aiming for that center coupler and you're going to kind of push it from the top, from the tip of the nozzle. And I kind of go like this and teeter it on, uh, but I'm being a little bit over, over demonstrating here, but there it is again. It'll just kind of bloop, slide right on. You have to kind of come at it from an even pressure now so that it goes on all at once. And then you do a little tug test at the end here, just, you know, gentle tug on the tip to make sure it's on there right. If you tug on that and it seems like it's gonna come off, you don't wanna put it in your ear because it actually might come off in your ear. Uh, so just make sure you do the little tug test on there to make sure it's on tight. If you have a hard time doing this, you can maybe show this video to a family member or you can arrange to stop by the, the center so that we can do it for you. Um, you will need to call and see what either the walk-in hour is or if you need an appointment. That's how you change domes and filters. Thanks for watching. Okay, great job humans. You made it to the end of the clinic to clinic hearing life orientation. I'm Dr. Stephanie Rose, and I hope that you found these videos helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to your center. And as always, I hope you hear your best.